Hi, uh, my name is Renee Giddens, and I am the Executive Director of the International Game Developers Association. Today, I, ooh, I'm going to be talking with you about interviewing them, identifying a positive work culture. So, uh, as I said, I am the Executive Director of the International Game Developers Association. I also run my own company, indie studio on the side called Stumbling Cat. Working on a title called Potions A Curious Tale, which we successfully kickstarted before. I've been named on the Forbes 30 under 30 list in games, as well as several other accolades. As for the IGDA, uh, it is our mission to support and empower game developers around the world in achieving fulfilling and sustainable careers. And that includes helping you uh, identify the companies that will be beneficial for you to work at. We have a expansive community of over a hundred chapters and special interest groups around the globe. We have webinars, research papers, white papers, and other best practices. And then we advocate for game developers around the world. So let's talk about job interviews. What, what is their purpose? Well, a job interview's purpose, of course, is to determine if you are a good fit for the role in the company that you are applying for. But that's not it. That's not the only thing that a job interview is good for. Job interviews also are for you to personally determine if the role in the company is a good fit for you. I know that game development is a very competitive field with few opportunities compared to the number of people who are looking for those opportunities. But looking at a job as not only an opportunity for you, but an opportunity for the company will help you ask the right questions and present yourself in a way that's going to make you seem to be the best option for that role. So what do you look for? What should you look for in a company? Well, I'm a strong belief in positive company culture. Uh, what qualities does that mean? Well, first of all, company culture has to be defined explicitly. Many companies will list this on their website. They'll have their mission and their values, things that they hold true, things that they strive to achieve. Um, particular values that I look for is believing in the wellness of their employees, that health of their priorities or of their employees are taken into priority. You want a company that is going to support you and your wellness, that's not going to force you into crunch, that is going to make adjustments so that you can be as successful as possible. I also look for companies that appreciate candor, uh, honest discussions, not necessarily rude discussions, but honest discussions, ones where you can both receive and provide critical feedback to your peers, but also to those above you. I think that a company who listens to the voices of its employees and feedback from its employees is going to be a much more positive work experience than one who only leads from the top. You're going to look for companies that want to foster positive social connections, and who are willing to provide praise and acknowledgement to everyone on the team. Uh, it's not just the leaders that should be celebrated. In fact, I'm a strong believer of leadership is about providing all success praise to the team and accepting all failure as your own responsibility. Uh, and then finally, you want to see a company providing support of their employees and even protection of their employees. Particularly if you're working at a large studio that has popular titles, you wanna make sure that that company is going to help protect you from fans who might be over enthusiastic in their criticisms or feedback. A company that puts their employees first, both from internal and external forces, is one that is going to help you thrive. When you're looking at a company, there's a few other things to look at as well. Um, the two other main ones that I like to break down are team composition and, and team development. 
a company that is monocultural uh, is going to be perhaps less creative, uh, less competent at solving problems, and have a, a harder time for some people to fit into. So looking at the diversity of the team, seeing if there's team pictures, seeing who they list, and looking at who they have in their leadership positions is important. Does it look like there's an opportunity for different opinions uh, and different types of leaders to be in those influential and strategic making positions? You also want to see if they have a setup and support for, for mentors and mentees and who your mentors and mentees would be in any position. And then finally, you want to look at advancement opportunities. This is something that will help you judge your potential growth at a company, um, not just in terms of your skill set, but of your career opportunities. If you are going to be working at a small company that will be saying the same size, there might be less opportunities for advancement than if that small company is deciding to grow and the teams will grow out uh, along with you or even below your current role. Speaking of teams growing, team development and investment of team development is also something to look for at a company. You want to see what type of training they'll be providing to you and what their expectations will be and how those expectations will be laid out. It's important to see if they have a review process or if they have structured mentorship guidelines. Companies that have explicit mentorship programs are going to be more supportive of your personal growth than if you're going to have to try to find your own proponents and mentors within the company itself. Again, with these expectations and performance reviews, you need to ask how they evaluate raises, how they evaluate um, promotions, and how they accept uh, feedback, both of the people that you're working with, you know, are you expected to provide performance reviews and commentary for your peers and for your leaders? And at the company level itself, a company that's going to listen to its employees and its feedback is going to be able to maintain that positive work culture that's really going to be make working there a positive and beneficial experience. So with these values and characteristics in mind, how are you going to go about evaluating a company? Before you interview a company, you can start this evaluation. The very first thing to look at is the job description. I mean, generally you're looking at a job first. Sometimes you might be looking at a company first if you're particularly passionate about what they do. Uh, but a job description itself will provide a lot of insight into the company. Uh, looking at the terms that they use, looking at the jargon that they use as well, is going to be a great way to evaluate if a job and if the company is going to be rightly suited for you. Obviously, there's a bit of a trope of people talking about ninjas and rock stars. Perhaps you don't want to work at a company that uses terminology like that. It says a little bit about their culture. It also says about what their expectations are. Uh, they will talk about collaboration, if collaboration is important to them. They will talk about diversity and inclusion in the job description, if diversity and inclusion is important to them. You will also be able to see how the role that you are applying for is intended to operate with others, with your peers, with your teammates, and understanding the channels that they think that will work best through. Obviously, you're not going to get super specific details, but it's easy to read between the lines and get a feeling for how they intend for the role in team to operate based on how they describe the job. And of course, it's great to look for any notes about culture, values, or more. Oftentimes, job descriptions will link out to the company's culture page and you can read more information there. Companies' websites tend to have a lot of information about them. Of course, there's the mission and values, which we mentioned, but you can also just tell what their priorities are based on how their pages are laid out, what they talk about, what they don't talk about. 
you can do a little investigation by evaluating the photos of the company, looking at any blogs or news articles they have listed, seeing what types of activities and team building that they prioritize, and if that's going to work with your preferred work life style and balance. Beyond this, I would do further investigation. Uh, if they don't have their mission values listed specifically, you should see what their founders are talking about and how they discuss the projects and the studio itself. You can see who is contributing. You know, if they don't have a list of their directors and leadership, go on LinkedIn, go on another website and see who works there and what their history in the industry has been and what they've contributed in the past. Be, being prepared with recent news about the company is also a great way to show that you're truly interested in the role in the company itself. And you can look at this from both a positive and negative perspective. If there are concerns that you have, it is wonderful to ask about them because not only can those concerns be addressed, but it shows that you're thinking about working at that company critically, that you're not just there as a rabid fan or as someone who is disinterested, that you care and you want to know how they're making themselves better. Glassdoor can be hit or miss, uh, depending on the company, depending on um, who has written responses there. So going on Glassdoor is great, but so is talking to industry friends. And this is yet another reason why having an extensive network of people within the game industry can be really beneficial to you. It can give you insider feedback. It can give you some insights that you might not be able to glean from publicly available information. As you're doing this research, if you're applying for a, a role, a rather standard role, you know, a non-director or CEO level, C-suite level role, you can probably find other people at the company who are working in that position or a similar position. And you can see what their experience is uh, in terms of their career history, as well as what they talk about. And that will give you even further insight into the expectations of the job and how you will fit within the company. And of course, before you go into an interview, if you know who's interviewing you, which you almost always will, it's great to look them up so you can have something to discuss with them and so you can understand the context of where they're coming from. Now, before you go into the interview itself, you really should prepare questions. It's hard to come up with questions on the spot, especially when you've just sat through an hour or multiple hours of interviewing. I recommend breaking it down uh, by these four main questions. You want to see what you hope to gain and if you will get that from them, what they believe success is for you, what their work culture is truly like on a day-to-day -day basis, not what they just try to make it look like based on their, their website and their public commentary. And you should have any concerns that uh, you, you've developed while researching them answered. I think probably what you hope to gain is the most important set of these questions. Um, understanding how they will help support your personal goals is extremely important and shows your own desire to grow in a way that when you're asking these questions, it will reflect positively on you. You'll want to look uh, and inquire about their mentorship support, their ways to help you grow. If, if you would like an ERG group to support you, if they have ERGs, that's an employee resource groups. Um, and if, there are other ways that they will help you grow as an artist or a programmer, a designer, or a producer, or a composer, or you know, even quality assurance. Whatever you are trying to be better at, you should see how they plan to help support your growth because companies are very rarely going to be hiring people who will be static in their skills. Um, when you're asking them about what the success is for that role, 
you should be looking at not only what they consider successful from a day-to-day -day position, but how quickly they expect you to ramp up and where they see you going in this role. Do they expect you to be in the same role in five years? Do they expect you to be uh, a leader or uh, a specialist who's going to be more focused? Do they expect you to develop your own teams within the organization? Understanding how they see this role developing also gives you a good way to talk about how your skills, your soft skills, your experience can help support that kind of growth that they're seeing. Now, uh, probably the easiest way to, to talk about these questions is to go over some examples. Uh, so I've created a list of examples that are based on these four main areas of inquiry. Uh, first one, and one that is often complimented, is what is your approach as a mentor? Ask the interviewer how they mentor others. And if this is a peer, say, you know, what is your experience being mentored at this company? Do you have a mentor? How are you helped to grow? Uh, this next question here is, how do you see this role evolving as the project develops from pre-production to production? It can be from any phase, should be probably asking about the phases of the project that that project is currently in or is about to enter. And that shows them that you're interested in keeping in mind the current state of the project, but that you're also being forward thinking. And it gives you some insight in not only what the position will start out being, um, but how it will continue to grow. Uh, this next question here is, how do you see the studio changing with its recent round of funding? Now, obviously you'd only ask this if a studio had received a recent round of funding, but again, it shows interest, it shows insight, and it shows forward thinking while still giving you information about expectations and potentially changing expectations and work environment. If they're saying, hey, with this recent round of funding, we're gonna be opening an office 20 miles to the south, uh, you can keep that in mind as you're evaluating the position and the area around the studio and anything else that's part of that balance while you're evaluating the different opportunities available to you. Uh, another question here is, how are conflicts between design and product resolved? This shows that, of course, you're interested in how internal workings at the studio happen, but it can also be tailored if you see some interesting part of the company's structure where you have you know, product managers and designers working hand in hand or designers reporting to product or product reporting to design and give you insight in how they discuss conflicts, how they come to resolution and potential issues that may be there. And then finally, uh, you can ask them if you asked if I would support my teammates working on weekends, sorry, you asked if I would be supportive of my teammates working on weekends. Is that common here? This actually happened in an interview to me. Uh, I had someone ask, you know, if, if your team was working overtime and you had to come in on Saturdays to support them, would you? And I believe my answer was, well, my team wouldn't be working on Saturdays because I don't support my team crunching and I would do everything possible to avoid that situation. Uh, if you have a question or a comment that you received during your interview that is concerning and perhaps reflective of a toxic work culture or potential issues with crunch, then it is absolutely encouraged for you to ask specifically about that potential issue and if any of those problems are going to be common or where their question is coming from in the first place. When you do large sets of interviews while you're when you're talking with multiple people, oftentimes the questions that they ask you are based on their own trials and tribulations that they face at the company. So listen closely to the questions that they're asking because those might be insight into issues within the company itself. So speaking of those issues, 
Well, what should you watch out for? What are the red flags? Uh, I personally don't think you should um, put too much weight in companies that like to use terms like hustle and ninja. Uh, obviously, sometimes that can just be a person that doesn't have a good understanding of the needs of a job, writing the job requirement. But oftentimes it can be hiding potential toxicity, potential crunch. You know, if you hear a team say, yeah, we do whatever it takes to launch the best product. Like, yeah, that could just be passion, but oftentimes it's a sign of some potentially unhealthy work-life balance behaviors and should require additional questions from you to understand the way that they approach their work-life balance. Uh, again, a really common thing to look out for are companies that get a little too friendly, uh, who say, you know, we're all a family here. Uh, we support each other through everything. It's great to feel close to your coworkers. It's great to feel passionate about your company. It's a job. Uh, I love games. I couldn't see myself working in any other industry, but my coworkers are not my family. I don't want to work for a family. I want to work for a product I'm interested in with peers that respect me. And I think that the term family is often overused and, and again, hiding some toxicity uh, or expectations of overcommitment for the role. Um, something else to keep an eye out for is frequent turnover. It can be a sign that, you know, something, something doesn't work well within the company. Uh, if you are replacing somebody who left, it's good to figure out how long they were there before they left. Uh, you might want to look at past people who worked at the company and see how long they've been at that company. And if you are seeing really frequently tur turnover, you might want to reach out to some friends who know those people who have worked there or simply ask, hey, you know, I seen you had a lot of turnover at this company recently. Can you explain why that has been happening and just put them on the spot because they should be able to answer those questions. Uh, and then finally, if you have an interview panel that just seems burnt out and they're not excited to be talking to you, they're not excited to be talking about the role, they're not excited to be talking about the company, that is a serious red flag. Yes, we all have hard weeks, but in general, when you are at an interview, talking to an interviewer, they should show some enthusiasm for the project, for the people they're working with. And that lack of excitement can be a sign of something else going wrong. So uh, I wanted to talk about some resources for you to look into these, um, you know, friends, research network, uh, how to practice doing job interviews. Uh, IGA chapters are a great way to do this. We have over 100 around the globe, so there's most likely one within your community. I recommend um, reaching out and seeing what they're up to. Obviously, a lot of uh, these chapters have either put their events on hold or switched to digital events for the last year and a half. And there's also 36 special interest groups all around the globe that support people everywhere. So if you're a game designer, or if you're a woman in games, or if you care about climate issues, there is a special interest group for you. And you can engage with these communities build up your network, build up your practice and skill sets, have people look at your portfolios and give you feedback. Leaning on others and leaning on your network is a great way to help with your career growth and opportunities. Um, so that's it. Uh, if there's anything I can help you with, please don't hesitate to reach out. We are always happy to provide you with feedback and insight and connect you with the resources that you need to be successful. So thank you so very much for your time. I hope that you have many wonderful job opportunities and that you keep in mind that any job interview that you're in is you interviewing them as much as it is them interviewing you. Thank you and take care.